Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Up in the air, the race for president is still undecided this morning as millions of ballots still need to be counted in highly populated communities across the country. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We're going to have to be patient until we, uh, the hard work of tallying the votes is finished. And it ain't over till every vote is counted. Every ballot is counted. And every person wants their vote counted that cast. Here in Michigan, as well as other battleground states, it is too early to tell who will come out on top. And it's a waiting game for other candidates as well. From the race for Michigan's U.S. Senate seat to several spots in the House of Representatives, we are tracking it all for you this morning. And of course, we have every angle of the election covered from the vote count to issues voters faced and the struggle for the power in the nation's capital. Welcome to Wednesday, everybody. November 4th. Thank you for waking up with us. You saw our entire team standing by on air and behind the scenes. We've got every angle of this covered for you. And thank you for joining us. I'm Everard Kasim. And I'm Rhonda Walker. Good morning to you. We do have a lot to get to, but first, the very latest on the race for the White House. So here in Michigan, President Trump is holding the lead over Joe Biden with 79% of the precincts reporting. Overall, it's Biden holding the popular vote and currently has more electoral college votes across the country, but it was President Trump seemingly declaring victory early this morning. NBC's Jay Gray is at the White House with a closer look at the race and the response. Hey there, good morning, Rhonda. Good morning, Evrod. And look, it really has been an unprecedented morning here at the White House. Supporters in what looked like a political event gathering in the East Room cheering as the president, with millions of votes still uncounted, essentially declared victory. With cameras packing the lawn outside the White House, inside, President Trump watches the results trickle in, speaking publicly for the first time around 2.30 this morning. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. A message echoed in a fundraising email overnight, which reads in part, the fake news media and their Democrat partners will refuse to call the race. They will try to do whatever it takes to keep us from winning. And that's why I need you to step up. Money that, in theory, could be used to mount a legal challenge to mail-in ballots received and counted after the polls closed, something the president continues to suggest could be a strategy. So we'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. We don't want them to find any ballots at 4 o'clock in the morning and add them to the list, okay? There are still millions of votes to be counted in several states, including Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, where officials say it could be a day or more before they have a final tally. And even then, this election could be tied up in the courts for weeks, if not longer. At the White House, Jay Gray, Local 4 News Today. All right, Jay, thank you. Former Vice President Joe Biden delivered brief but optimistic remarks after midnight to supporters in an arena parking lot in Delaware. I'm here to tell you tonight, we believe we're on track to win this election. Yes. We knew because of the unprecedented early vote and the mail-in vote, that it's going to take a while. We're going to have to be patient until we, uh, the hard work of tallying the votes is finished. And it ain't over till every vote is counted. Every ballot is counted. And those are car horns that you heard honking there in support. Biden said that he and running mate Kamala Harris will have a lot more to say a little bit later today. And one by one, the votes are continuing to be counted. Rod Maloney is live outside of the TCF Center, where over time, the ballots are being counted there. That process started early yesterday and continues as we speak, Rod. 
Yes, uh, they just kind of changed shifts here at the TCF Center. Some of the people who stayed overnight uh, were able to leave. Some new people, some fresh eyes, people who have had a little sleep, uh, have had a chance to come in and uh, start working. Now, we'll show you some video. Uh, not a lot has changed in terms of the activity downstairs. There is not a lot of ballot counting going on. Now, we know that uh, in the state of Michigan, about 79% of the votes have been counted, and they've been telling us that uh, much of the Detroit count is in as well, but the Wayne County uh, count still is ongoing. And in fact, uh, the last time we checked, it was about 52 percent uh, of Wayne County has been counted. So there's a lot of work to do here. Um, but it's uh, mainly because we've seen such high voter turnout. More than 5 million voters statewide, 3.3 million absentee ballots. That's about 93 percent of the ballots requested. They think that number could go higher. Uh, we had about 2.2 million people show up in person yesterday. And so a lot riding on the absentee ballots and uh, a lot riding on the work that is being done in here. Now, last night, Janice Winfrey held a news conference about 730, uh, where she talked about how long she thinks it's going to take to get this count accomplished. The way that the, the work is going here at TCF, the way that the work is going, it looks like, and I'm not making promises, but if we continue at this pace, we should have 100 percent results by about this time tomorrow. So again, I'll reiterate that she said that about 7.30. So instead of being 11 o'clock tonight, maybe more like 7 or 7.30 is when they think they can have the full numbers in. And uh, so that, that is important because nationally, everybody is watching for counts in Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And so it's going to be kind of a long day here. A lot of people working hard to make things happen. We'll certainly be here to watch. Reporting live downtown, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Ron, thank you. 605 is your time now. And the other big Michigan race that we're watching for you this morning is the race for senator between Democratic incumbent Gary Peters and his Republican challenger, John James. And all the polls had it close, and it is close. Grant Herms joins us now here following that race and some other local races for us this morning. Grant? There have been a lot of Michigan races that have been races to watch. This race here for Senate, at least so far, has flipped expectations and some of our polling, which for weeks had Peters in the lead. So here's what we know right now. Now, Peter's down right now about five points at 46%. John James there at 51.8%. That's shifted a little bit. And these two have been trading jabs for weeks in those on-air ads. I'm sure you've seen them. And they've each raised about $40 million in funds. That's a lot of money for this race that at the end of 2019 was thought to be a pretty easy seat for Peters and the Democrats to hold on to. Now, both Democrats spoke last night to supporters as the votes were being counted. So I'll just uh, say, you know, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have a better idea sometime uh, tomorrow morning, but it may be beyond tomorrow morning uh, before we actually get the vote count. And we're just so excited. There are still a lot of votes to be counted, to be sure. But we're ex extremely excited and optimistic about where we stand right now. And there are a few House races we're watching as well. First, we'll start with the two open seats here, District 3 and District 10. Over in District 3, Representative Justin Amash's open seat. Peter Meyer of the Meyer Grocery family in the lead there. Not a huge surprise, but we are still waiting for Grand Rapids absentee votes to come in. In District 10, Lisa McLean here pretty handily winning this one. This is the seat left open by retiring Congressman Paul Mitchell. We expected Republican to win there. She is going to win that likely by a lot of votes there. And we do want to talk about a couple seats that Republicans badly want to flip in the state of Michigan, and that is District 11 and District 8. And there, Representative Alyssa Slotkin here, down by about 3%, 3 4% of the vote. There. That's tightening here as we've gone on through the night. We're still waiting on absentee votes from Ingham and Oakland counties there. And likewise here in District 11, uh, Haley Stevens down about seven or yeah, rather about seven points or so here. And Stevens has been the subject of pretty, some pretty aggressive attack ads. But District 11 does include parts of Wayne and Oakland counties, which we are still waiting for a lot of those votes to come in tonight as well. So a lot of things to watch here as the day and morning goes on. Rhonda. <laughs> there certainly are. We do want to get you updated on some more with the local races that have an impact for years to come. Some of the proposals that you had on your ballot. Let's first take a look at the two statewide proposals that would change the state's constitution if passed. Prop 1 asks voters to approve changes to the way state and local park projects are funded. As of now, the yes vote has a strong lead with about 75 percent of the precincts reporting. It's an 84 percent yes vote. Vote 16 percent 
no vote. Over to Prop 2, it would make changes to the way law enforcement handles searching cell phones, laptops, requiring a search warrant for that data. At this time, Proposal 2 is also a strong yes at 89% over 11% no. As votes continue to be counted, we will continue to update you on the results on these proposals in all of the Michigan races, both here on the air and also a full list on clickondetroit.com. Right now at 6.09, we have an update on the breaking news that we have been following for you this morning. A suspect has now died after being shot by police in southwest Detroit. It happened earlier this morning in the area of Spring Wells, just north of I-75. Police are saying the person involved fired shots into a house and officers chased him twice. And it was during the second chase that they tell us he fired shots at police. They fired back and again killed him. We do want to turn our attention now to the weather. Meteorologist Brandon Rue is standing by with a look at the forecast. Yesterday was beautiful. Another day just like it, maybe better? Yeah, maybe 10 degrees better and no flash in the pan here. We've got an extended November warm up. We'll take it as we look live downtown toward the Ambassador Bridge. The one cool spot, 39 in Ann Arbor. Everywhere else, it seems we're seeing middle 40s right now with a little bit of a breeze, so it may feel a degree or three cooler, but 43 at the bus stop for the kids. Bright sunshine as the sun rises at 7 11 this morning, 67 degrees this afternoon, wall to wall sunshine, a bit of a breeze kicking up. But guys, as mentioned, no flash in the pan. That seven day is something to behold coming up. All right, thank you very much. It is 610 right now on your Wednesday morning. And of course, we do want to keep you updated on what's going on with the races here in our state. And right now we have Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, who is joining us on the phone this morning. Thank you so much for waking up early with us. It looks like we have Jake Rollo representing the Secretary of State's office for us this morning, the Communications and External Affairs Director. Jake, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Sorry about the confusion. <laughs> Not a problem. We know. Happy to be with you today. <laughs> Thank know you for Jocelyn being with us. Jocelyn was probably up throughout the entire night, maybe getting some rest, and she probably has earned it. Let's talk about where things stand right now with precincts reporting and how many more ballots yet to be counted. Yeah, so, um, you know, what I think is important for all voters to remember, uh, and really what we've said throughout the entire year, is that um, given the, the laws in the state of Michigan and number of absentee ballots that we've seen. Um, it would take time, and it is taking time for us to count all the absentee ballots. When I say us, who I'm actually referring to are the clerks and election workers, these are community members, public service across the state who administer Michigan's uh, largely decentralized election system. Um, and so right now, you know, there are still many hundred thousand of uh, that have not been counted yet. Uh, the results that are in, what people are largely seeing, are uh, the votes that people, that voters cast across the state yesterday at their polling places. And then some of those absentee ballots have been counted uh, by jurisdictions who uh, counted them uh, both at their polling places and in their counting boards. But there are still uh, several, you know, if not more than a dozen, very large jurisdictions that have absentee counting boards, so places where they uh, separately uh, and very meticulously and fairly every one of those absentee ballots and they still have not reported their results because they just they couldn't start until uh, recently really yesterday morning mm -hmm. um and uh they just so many ballots that's how michigan law works that was the the day that they get to start and it'll take some time all right. Well, we know Are that you? there's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson and uh, the entire team working very hard. So we certainly thank you for, for joining us yes, this morning. Yes, very quickly, though, before you go, and I know we're having a little trouble with your audio. Um, so, But just some clarification. Last night around 11, Jocelyn Benson thought maybe in the next 24 hours all the votes would be counted. I know that was just kind of an estimate. Is that still the thinking right now? Maybe by tonight? So I mean, what, what we've been thinking, and actually I think, you know, her statement, what she was trying to uh, reflect was that by tonight, we expect to have a much better idea of where things stand in Michigan. However, if it's a close election and it's you know, looking like it will be, 
it's really going to take until every jurisdiction reports. Okay. Um, so it'll depend a little bit. What I would say to voters is be patient, trust the process, trust that every ballot will be counted, and see where we're at this evening. Uh, by this right. evening, we should know much more, but it is quite possible that we'll still be waiting at every jurisdiction. All right, Jake. Well, we right. will keep in touch <laughs> as the day Sounds goes good. on. Thank you for joining us. And then coming up at 630, we're going to get an update on the city of Detroit's efforts to count all of the ballots in a timely matter. I'll be talking with city clerk Janice Winfrey. She'll be joining us live coming up in just a little bit. In other news, we are covering for you this morning cruises canceled. What we can expect to see in the United States as it relates to cruise lines setting sail again. Plus, Jason is here this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Election day has come and gone. Well, the actual day itself. I mean, really, we're talking about possibly election weeks, but the effects of misinformation may still linger. Up next, the issues some voters in Michigan had to deal with and what we need to watch for going forward. It was an election day for the record books, and as we wait for the anticipated results, we want you to know that we're committed to keeping you informed. For us at Local 4 and Click on Detroit, it is not about being first. It's about being right. And we'll be reporting results around the clock until every ballot is counted. People care so much about this election and the issues that matter to them. The results are just one story, and we're committed to telling the hundreds of stories that come next. Stay with Local 4.